Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Larry Lurcy. Welcome back to the channel. Great video for you today. We're going to talk about drop shadows and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do drop shadows. There's tons of ways to do them in Photoshop and um, I'm going to show you one way that's a little more complicated that will allow you to do like a long stretched out shadow like from the sun setting and you've got the long shadow cast behind them. That type of a drop shadow and then kind of a more basic contact shadow for if you're trying to composite some people into a scene and you just want to make it look like they're in the scene without kind of the big dramatic uh, shadow behind them, but also make them not look like they're hovering in space. Before we get going, I want to give you a quick update on my 2021 New Year's resolution to try and reach 1 billion subscribers. Uh, I was checking the numbers yesterday and it looks like we're still a little short, actually several million short of the goal, but we're going to keep at it. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and help me inch a little bit closer to that 1 billion goal. But enough talk. If you're ready to get into drop shadows and jump into Photoshop, let's roll the intro. Okay, so we're going to show you two different ways. Um, one way to throw like a long shadow, a little more complicated route, and then one way to add just kind of a simple contact shadow for when you're doing composites and things like that. So let's start right here with this baseball guy and we want to add kind of a long drop shadow that goes back this way. Again, we're trying to keep an eye on the light source. Light's coming from this way so we want to make sure the drop shadow goes that way. Um, so we're going to try and put a drop shadow like that and here's how we're going to do that. We've got the baseball player on his own layer like this. We've selected him and dropped him in there. I've got uh, other videos on selections if, if you want to look that up, but uh, get your subject on the background. Next thing we want to do is make it a smart object. You do that by right clicking or control click on a Mac and do convert to smart object. And what smart object is going to do is we can transform things. We can um, make him really teeny tiny and then later bring him back and we don't lose any resolution. So whenever possible you're going to try and work with those smart objects. But we've made him a smart object, so now we can scale him later if we need to um, based on the other elements in the image. Next thing we're going to do is come down here to Effects and click on Drop Shadow. Now the settings here aren't super important because you can come back later and change them, but uh, it's set to Multiply. I've got it 100%. You can play around with the, um, the spread here or the size. The size will kind of soften things a little bit. Distance um, doesn't really matter because we're going to be moving in anyways, but I like to get just a little bit um, size and spread so it's not a super hard line shadow unless that's what you're looking for. And we'll leave it a little bit more on the hard side like that. That's pretty good. Alright, so we'll hit OK. So now we've got this drop shadow attached to our subject. Whoops. So if we move him around, the drop shadow moves with him. What we want to do is separate that drop shadow. So we're going to come down here and right click or control click and do create layer. It's going to give us this warning. Hit OK. And now as you look over here, you can see that we have separated out the drop shadow from the subject. Just like that. Then what we're going to do is shape this shadow. So we're going to do that by doing a, a transform. Make sure you're on the shadow. Do Command-T, Control-T, and uh, bring up your transform. Then what we're going to do is grab up here, hold down Command, and we can start shaping it however we want. Do you want like a long shadow, a short shadow? We're going to do just kind of like this at an angle, about like that, um, just for the purpose of this. Now you may need to move it around so that the feet line up. And even if you get the front of the feet lined up, you may need to come back and add a little bit in some of these areas like that. So it's not going to be 100% foolproof. We'll hit OK there. Uh, but we got the front of the toes lined up pretty well. Maybe move it over just a hair. But like I said, you may need to come back and thicken the base a little bit on that. But more or less, we've got his shape reflected out. Looks pretty good. 
Uh, next thing I would do is we need to soften a little bit, unless you want this hard shadow. You know, if you had a really hard spotlight on him, it would be a harder shadow. But as you can see, he's got a softer light on him, so we need to have a little bit softer shadow. So we're going to go up here to Filter and not our normal Gaussian Blur. We're going to go to Blur Gallery, Field Blur. Slide this over until it gives it a little bit more softness. I'm going to go ahead and put our target down here. Do a little bit of field blur, and then we're going to go to Iris Blur. And what Iris Blur is going to do is let the blur work more as it heads away from the center. So we'll put our center down here, grab one of these edges and bring it up to out here. And then this line is going to kind of, this inside dot is going to kind of decide where it starts blurring and that type thing. So we'll put it about like that. Hit return, let it think for a minute. And now we've got a little more blur out here at the end than we have uh, like in here. So that gets you pretty close. Uh, I next probably would go down and drop this opacity down to somewhere around 50%. And there you go. That's kind of a long drop shadow. Again, we'd probably need to clean up around the feet, but we're going to have the basic shape up here. So if that's what you're looking for, you can even drop that opacity more. If you want it to be even softer, you could go back in filter blur. We could even just do a Gaussian blur. Um, if you want it kind of uniformly soft, something like that, until you get it how you like it. But that's basically how you're going to get that shape. So that's how you would do a long shadow. And uh, like I said, it's a little bit more of a complicated system, but uh, it gives you a kind of different look than what we're going to do next. Now one thing that's important to keep in mind here is you want to go ahead, hold down shift, and so you select both of these layers and hit the little uh, chain link icon here. And now we've got it where they're chained together because we don't want to move him and have the drop shadow still standing over there. So now the shadow is going to move with him. So that's basically how you're going to do that kind of a drop shadow. All right, so now let's look at this scenario. We've got a couple here that we have extracted and dropped into this scene. And what we want to do here is we don't want that dramatic kind of shadow. We just want a bit of a contact shadow, or kind of a grounding shadow here at the bottom. And what I'm talking about is the shadow down here at the bottom where because we have nothing now, it looks like they're just kind of hovering over the floor. It doesn't really look like they're standing on the floor. So what we want to do is get some shadowing down here. And the way we're going to do this is zoom in just a tiny bit so we can see what we're working with. And what we want to do is build up a series of shadows here at the bottom. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. I want to make sure it is between the couple. Let's just go ahead and label this so we can see what we're doing. So it's between the couple and the background. Then I'm going to come over here and grab a brush. I want to make sure that I've got a soft brush. i got my opacity set about oh, 67, 70% is fine. And what I'm going to do, i got to make sure I am set to black. So I've got a, a black brush with a soft edge. And I'm going to come along here, and I'm just going to kind of trace the outline of where the shoe meets the ground because if he was standing on this floor, he'd be casting a, a little bit of a contact shadow right where the shoe meets the floor. And you can see I missed a little bit of my selection there, but that's okay for our purposes. We're just working on the shadows right now. So everywhere that this shoe meets the ground, I need to have a little bit of a contact shadow. There you go, just like that. We're gonna probably, um, Let's maybe even change the blending mode to, let's do hard light on this one. And then we can drop down the opacity just a little bit. Kind of my rule of thumb is I want the drop shadow to almost disappear when I'm looking at it and it looks like it's gone, but then when I turn it off and on, I can see it. And you can see there's that really subtle uh, contact shadow there. And I'm going to bring it up a little bit. I want it to be a little bit darker. Okay, so that's about 77% give you a good idea. So that's one. Now we're going to add another one. And we want to do this by a series of adding smaller and smaller layers. Instead of trying to do one layer that has all the drop shadow, I'm going to do several 
that each have a very faint drop shadow. So I add another layer with my brush again. This time I'll go with a little bit bigger brush and I'll go a little bit farther out, kind of just around the shoes. And you don't have to be perfect with this. Kind of like that. Now one thing to keep in mind, if we look up here on the subjects, they are basically being lit from this left side. Um, it's not a strong light uh, as far as casting shadows and things like that, but it's definitely a direction coming from the left, and so I want to keep that in mind. I want to have a little more shadowing on the right side than on the left, because that would, would make sense um, with this type of a lighting setup. So maybe about like that. Again, that looks terrible, but we're going to switch to soft light and then bring that opacity down till it looks like it's almost disappeared. Kind of like that. Looks like it's gone, but if we do before and after, it's still there. Let's do one more. Now I'm going to go a little bit bigger, and this is going to kind of be just the base of them. Just kind of like if there's a overall shadow that they're casting from just being in that space. Kind of like that. Pretty good. Switch to soft light. Bring that way down until it kind of disappears, just like that. Looks like it's gone, but it's still there. And so really, when we look at this, I'm going to take all three of these. I'm just hit shift to select all of them. I'm going to hit the little folder down here, and I'm going to put them, we'll just put DS for drop shadows. Now right now when you look at this, you can't really see too much shadow at all. But you'll see when we turn it off, there's actually a lot there. And it almost it almost looks overdone when you turn it back on. Um, and so in that case, uh, you could come back through here and adjust them individually. Or, of course, you could just turn down the opacity of that folder overall. But I'm just going to bring them all down a little bit, kind of like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and add one more in here. Same thing. I've got my soft black brush. Make it a little bit bigger. It's going to be just a little bit more shadow kind of behind them, again, to kind of reflect what that light would be doing. There we go. This one we'll try. Let's see. Soft light seems to be working the best in this situation. Bring that way down. You can not really see it. All right. So then we drop back. You can see that there's not really a visible drop shadow here, but if you take it away, they look like they're levitating over the floor. When you put it back, they look like they're grounded on the floor. It's like that. If you decide it's too much, you can just take this whole folder and bring that opacity down a little bit, even like that. Just depends on how much of a shadow you want. But they don't look like they're floating anymore. It's giving you a base. And that's going to come down a little bit to personal preference on what you think re looks realistic and what you would expect to have. You know, if I was lighting them with a soft light source from up here, the ground would have more of a not as noticeable drop shadows, kind of like this. Um, if I had more dramatic light on them, I would need a more dramatic shadow. But in this situation, I'm just trying to have contact where it looks like they're on the floor, and I think that does the job right there. I've got its own folder, so again, I can go back and adjust any of those individual ones or just play with the overall opacity. The trick is just doing multiple layers of this soft shadow so that you kind of build it up slowly and you get a little more realistic look. And there you have it, two different ways of doing drop shadows. And again, you kind of need to determine what situation you're in to decide what kind of a drop shadow you need. Make sure you're keeping an eye on that light source. Is it hard light? Is it soft light? What direction is it coming from? Because your drop shadow really needs to match that light source, as does the background. So if you get all those things in sync and give a nice, believable drop shadow, you'll be just fine with all your composites. As I mentioned, there's plenty of other ways to do drop shadows. If you've got a technique that you use, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Also, if you have any questions about the two techniques I did in today's video, just leave them in the comments and uh, let me know and I'll do my best to answer it for you. But that's all we have for right now. I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.